we're going to take a deep dive into the physics of the neutron and measuring how long it lives. Why these new measurements, only recently completed, will allow physicists and even cosmologists a better understanding of how the first elements were formed in the universe. Come along in this fascinating world of neutrons. It is indistinguishable from magic. Recently, at Los Alamos National Laboratory, an experimental team made a phenomenal breakthrough in precision using what's called a bottle experiment, the fundamental lifetime of one of the most important, if not the most important, actor in the Big Bang Theory. And that is the neutron. Ultra cold neutron lifetime experiment used a quantity of ultra cold neutrons. These Neutrons were held in a magneto-gravitational trap. And during that period of time, some of the neutrons underwent a decay, known as beta decay, where they shoot out an antineutrino, a electron, and a proton. These decay in about 15 minutes. But getting the exact, precise estimate of the lifetime is extremely challenging. First of all, you need these neutrons, which are decaying and shooting off high-energy radiation. That's very dangerous and can have impacts on health and human safety. Obtaining a cold enough cloud to hold and confining these neutral particles, remember neutrons, they're named neutron because they're neutral, obtaining the precise value for their lifetime, symbolized by tau in physics, has huge consequences for understanding both the origin of the universe and its ultimate fate. And it gives a way to test using this cosmic debris from the origin of the universe it will allow us to gain a greater appreciation of fundamental forces at work inside the nucleus and, in fact, on the cosmos at large. This experiment was done at the Los Alamos Neutron Science Center. This collaboration using ultra-cold neutrons finally achieved a phenomenal level of precision on the uncertainty on the lifetime of the neutron. And this is incredibly important because if neutrons didn't decay, we would have never have existed because neutrons are the fundamental building block of all matter along with their counterpart, the proton. Now, protons are known to be stable. At least we believe they have infinite lifetimes or extremely long lifetimes. But neutrons, we know they have a very finite lifetime. They found 877.75 seconds with an uncertainty of only 0.039%. So this uncertainty that they achieved is half the uncertainty of the previous experiment. So by counting how many neutrons remain after a period of time interval, the neutron decay rate, and also the average neutron lifetime can be calculated. But there are many challenges. One of them is that the neutrons live for so long. They live about 15 minutes. Now, because they lasted that long, but not longer, on average, in the early universe, the neutrons could get bound up with protons to make things like deuterium and tritium, and eventually, those could combine to make helium. And most of the hydrogen and helium and their isotopes that we observe today are around because of the decay of neutrons. So neutrons play a huge role in the formation of light elements that we observe today as relics from the Big Bang. So achieving a large enough number of decays required statistical precision in a practical amount of time when they last on average 15 minutes before the decay in a highly radioactive environment is a huge experimental challenge. The other challenge is that these neutrons, you ask where well, you don't go down to the store and ask for a cup of neutrons. You have to produce them in radioactive decays or what are called spallation sources. They generate neutrons that are extremely energetic millions of times more energetic than what is needed to confine them in a magnetic bottle such as these uh, researchers used. So you, how do you cool down a neutron? You have to use what are called moderation devices, ways to slow them down. There are many techniques to do that. These challenges were overcome by a much greater extent by the Lancy collaboration working on these ultra-cold neutrons. So researchers were able to slow down or moderate the energy of neutrons. And they used what are called polarized neutrinos so that they could use a magnetic field as a confinement. So this is an invisible trap, an invisible prison just for neutrons, as sort of a bowl with an open top. And it's made with permanent magnets arranged in what's called a Halbach array. To look at experiments and the challenges that my fellow experimentalists play is always so gratifying to me, trying to raise the next generation, if you will, of future experimentalists. And what could be more exciting than doing an experiment that basically traces the properties of these atomic particles, these nuclear particles, back to the origin of the evolution of the universe? So they did so with this ingenious trap. It's a trap! 
So therefore, the coldest of the ultra-cold neutrons have very little chance of escaping during the storage period, which has to be many times the length of 15 minutes, which is very challenging to do because 15 minutes is long for a particle. And it's also long if you have to do trillions or millions of these things if you're a poor, suffering graduate student. This process, which is called cleaning, they store these neutrons, so cool, in a trap for between 20 and 1550 seconds, which is twice the approximate average lifetime. And they counted how many were left, and they counted the types of particles that emit, and pr predominantly protons and electrons. So they used a buffer volume between the neutron source and the trap in which they were held as a kind of storage period. The buffer also flattens and smooths out and filters out the energy distribution of these ultra-cold neutrons, getting a more uniform statistical sample to probe. Not only did this technique eliminate the possibility of losses from the trap when the neutrons are transported from trap to detector, it also allowed this ingenious team to map out the energies and what are called the trajectories. What directions, what distribution of motion do these cold neutrons take? And this is a way for checking for the bane of experimental physicists and astronomers all alike, what are called systematic errors, errors intrinsic to your apparatus. These can only be removed by doing effectively another experiment to just look at the source of error and not the underlying phenomena. The ultra-cold neutron team researchers also improved on the way that they analyzed their data. They use what's called uh, blind analysis. Different team members using different computer codes looking at the same data with the underlying phenomena effectively subtracted out to remove potential experimental bias, known as confirmation bias. And what was left was ignorant of the true signal, which they knew was approximately 15 minutes in duration for the lifetime of these neutrons. And remember, this is incredibly important. If neutrons lasted much longer, there would have been tremendous amounts more of, of, of helium in the universe than we actually observe, impacts on how many stars can form in the early universe, which would impact the probability and the density of galaxies. So the stakes couldn't be higher for measuring this effect and getting it precisely. So because of all these ingenious experimental and analysis improvements, they were able to reduce the total uncertainty to a level where the systematics are comparable or smaller than the statistical errors. You can only do so uh, much with systematic errors. There's some residual that you can't get better than. And actually, we can extend these measurements now to improve some of the predictions and the abundances of things like neutrino masses and the abundance of neutrinos and even the light element abundances, which in combination with the cosmological measurements of the cosmic microwave background and baryon acoustic oscillations that myself and my colleagues work on, we will understand and be able to make better predictions and simulations about the ultra-early universe. Remember, these particles are not the only relics of the early universe, but as such, they are incredibly important. They trace the physical properties, the temperature, the density, the pressure of the early universe. And every step forward in precision and accuracy takes us closer to the true answer. And these techniques can be extended to other branches of physics. We can hope to lead to more and better improvements upon our efforts to detect the only particle known to be elementary, but whose mass we don't know about, the neutrino. The standard model of physics predicts that the parameter that governs these neutrino properties, together with the vector coupling constant, those two together would fully describe these very exotic weak interactions. These results bear on the physics of quark. Quark! What are you doing here? Showing the universe that I'm a superhero. But one of the most important properties called the matrix element, and the matrix element in question that can be probed by these neutron decay measurements is symbolized by V up down. The current best value for this parameter comes from the observation of nuclear beta decays with very, very complex heavier nuclei. And they're very difficult to measure and construct uh, experiments just to probe those matrix elements. But these measurements by this Los Alamos team provide more systematic immune va values that could be important for studies of the quarks themselves. So this experiment really resulted in a twofer provided the most accurate and precise measurements of the neutron lifetime, but it also bears on the physics of quarks. And those properties are incredibly important for revealing the properties of matter at the elementary level. So you're going from a composite particle made of up and down quarks to learning about the interactions between those up and down quarks. And those are elementary particles. They don't decay into other particles the way that the neutron can decay, as obviously does occur in neutron decay experiments. So it's powerful sometimes to hit the bottle, to use experiments like this just conducted by this collaboration.